Hi everyone, it's so great to see you again with a new and quick video in which I believe it will help you a lot getting better results using built-in tools and new features of Unreal Engine 5. If you want to check out my latest project in which I use this approach, you will find the art station link in the description below and do not hesitate to hit the like button on art station and I will be so grateful to you. So. Today's topic is about converting low poly flat meshes into high poly realistic looking meshes in just almost 10 minutes and without the need to use any other 3D software. So let's get started. So we are here in Unreal, it's a new empty project and before we get started we have to check multiple things. First we need to check that modeling tools plugin is enabled and I believe it's enabled by default inside new UE5 projects but we have to double check that especially if your project was migrated from UE4 so it's probably disabled. We can check that by going to edit plugins and then search for modeling we can type here modeling we will find modeling tools editor mode which is enabled by default if not make sure you enable it and i think it will require to restart the editor so go for it but before you restart the editor also make sure that bridge plugin is enabled we are going to search for bridge and we will find it if you do not find it make sure you download it and installed it from the epic launcher and it should be there so after that if it requires to restart the editor do that and we need first to get assets from quicksit bridge which we enabled so we have multiple ways to open the bridge browser from unreal we can just hover on content browser add and we will find add Quixel content. Another way is to go to window and Quixel bridge under get content section. So just click on Quixel bridge and it will open the launcher of Quixel bridge. Make sure you sign in using your Epic Games account or whatever you use to open Quixel bridge. Actually we can scroll down and we will find this asset. It's called Tundra Rocky Ground just select it and also you are free to use any other asset it's totally up to you the approach itself can be applied on all these assets so don't worry you don't have to use the same assets that i use you can use whatever you want so what we get here in the bottom of quicksilk bridge browser is a preference for the quality if we just open it we will find four different qualities starting from the low quality which stands for 1k texture resolution and up to nanite which stands for 8k resolution so for games we don't use 8k resolutions as it's overkill for the memory and the performance so instead we go for 1k 2k texture resolution maybe some assets have 4k texture resolution so um, this asset is quite large so we can go with high quality which is 4k texture resolution and we then hit download and wait for it to download and we can go in so here is our asset downloaded so we can then hit add and it will automatically add it to our project also i need to get this material which is dry trampled sand i downloaded it before so it's in my local library and i can then add it without the need to download it again so hit add and wait for it to be added we can then close quicksilk bridge so we are back here in unreal we will find our added assets under mega scans folder so we will start with the dry trampled sand material so we will find it under surfaces folder and the dry trampled sand folder we need then to open our modeling tools tab we can do that by clicking on select mode and we will find modeling here or we can press shift 5 as a hotkey so 
going in modeling tab we will find various options here based on the selection we will find its options or properties so we need first to create a surface or a primitive shape to work on and apply the material on it so we can go with a plane for example so we select here a rect which stands for a rectangular and here in the viewport we will find this plane moving with our cursor and if you have an environment filled in with some assets so when you will try to add this plane you will notice that it try to align itself and rotate on the surface so so to turn off this function you can do it by going to positioning section and turn off align to normal so wherever you put your cursors the plane will stand in its zero rotation so we can then left click and press complete so here is our static mesh we are we created we can just move it a little bit up also I prefer to upscale it a little so maybe five so we need then to go to this place tool here under deform category and we will get several options for it but as we know a displacement surface should have a high number of poly count to make the displacement map work sufficiently so we can do that using the subdivisions option but before i increase the poly count number i need first to disable any displacement applied to the static mesh so we don't need then to wait for the calculation of the displacement and also visualize it well as it will stay flat by default the displacement type here will be Berlin noise and displacement intensity will be something like 10 and the subdivisions will be 4 so I'm just getting the default values of these options and that is what you will get when you just click on the displace tool so we can go in displacement type we can leave it for now and set the displacement intensity to zero we will then notice that the surface returns flat again but the subdivisions is actually turned is actually four times than before to visualize it well we can use the show wireframe option here is the subdivisions before and here is after but four is still too low for a displacement surface so we can go for 100 it's now more dense and have more triangles and vertices we then press accept and go again for this place tool i did that as i need to actually subdivide it again so unfortunately unreal doesn't support a number that is more than 100 so what we can do here is actually turn the subdivisions to zero and in the displacement type we choose texture to the map and we will notice some new options here which needs the displacement map or the displacement texture and the channel of it so to get the displacement texture we will get this map which is collusion roughness and displacement we can select it press this little arrow and it will apply the texture on it but we didn't notice any difference as we set our displace intensity to zero so nothing just happened we just applied the texture itself so we also need to apply the material of this texture actually i will first turn off show wireframe and get the get the material instance we downloaded from quicks bridge and click this letter arrow if you didn't notice any difference on the plane you can just go back to select mode and you will find it and also come back again to modeling choose displace tool and everything should work fine then okay so we can then increase the displace intensity something like five and we will notice it has some displacement but it's weird not the actual displacement that is because we are using the wrong channel so to know what specific channel we will use we can just know it from the naming convention of the texture itself usually the displacement is in the blue channel but sometimes it's in the red channel so here we have 
occlusion, roughness, displacement. And to make sure we can open the texture itself, disable red and green channel and we will find it's the displacement texture. So we can then switch the channel in here, use the blue channel and we will find it's it's using the right one so the displacement intensity is actually too low so we can increase it to something like 15 so as we get closer to the static mesh we will visualize it it's displaced and and we can also show wireframe also we can increase the subdivisions to something like 10 for example and wait for it to be finished we will notice it's too dense for now if we turn it off show our frame it's too dense for now but these little details these micro details are starting to show up and pop up if we try to increase it to 20 it will gives this error desired number of subdivisions 20 exceeds maximum number 11 for a mesh of this number of triangles so to get rid of this error we just open the advanced options and we will and we will find disable size warning we will just turn it on and we can set then the subdivisions to any number you need and without getting this error so we will try 20 and and wait for it to complete the calculation of the displacement and we can see actually it's getting more micro details in there and if we turn it on show wireframe we will find it too dense than usual but actually it's too dense for now so we can set it back to something like 10 and also be aware as we increase the subdivisions the more it will take time in calculations and turn it then into nanite so i will keep it at 10 you can keep it at any number you need you may be going for a smaller number or a bigger number as it's up to you and it's up to your direction so i will turn off show our frame and you will notice it's way too displaced so 15 i think it's too much we can try 10 for example and wait for it to calculate again um i think actually 12 is yeah 12 is very good so we are done here we can just accept and take care it will take some time to calculate and save your mesh and sure that depends on your machine specs so a more powerful pc will take shorter time and vice versa so we can accept then what we did and wait for it to convert the static mesh so it's done here for me we can go back again to selection mode and we need then to find this asset in the content browser if you go to your content you will find it under a new folder called underscore generated unreal generates it automatic when you create meshes using the modeling tools and if it's not in the same directory you can then right click on your static mesh and choose browse to asset or simply pressing ctrl b it will open the content browser with the mesh selected so we need then to open it we will notice it have the default material it's it doesn't have the material we applied so we need to back again to get our material we can simply find it by this magnifying icon so left click on it and you will find the material we use please make sure please make sure to use the same material you applied here in the static mesh so you will get the same displacement and if not you will get weird results as each material has its own displacement texture so we can simply select this material and back again here in the asset editor and click on this little arrow and it will apply the material for us on the static mesh so we will notice here that 
the triangles count is over 2 million which is too much for a static mesh like this but thankfully here we have nanite so we can use it to save performance and have all this amount of data without losing these micro details so what we can do is going here in nanite settings and enable nanite support just take this box and then apply changes so also if you have some issues in visualizing small micro details you can you can just um, you can just decrease the fallback relative error we can just try something like 0.5 and apply changes so we will notice we get more details in the static mesh and also the fallback triangles and fallback vertices will increase so for now it's good for me to go with one which is default and now we are done with this static mesh we need to make sure that is nanite is enabled and we can visualize it well so we can simply close this tab and go for let nanite visualization and mask mask is simply visualize the nanite meshes and it gives these meshes a green color and other meshes will have this red color so also if we go to nanite visualization triangles we will find triangles of the static mesh also we can visualize clusters as any other nanite mesh also if you didn't get these results or or you just hover on one of these visualization modes and you didn't get any difference so maybe your graphics card doesn't support DirectX 12 or maybe it's not enabled in the project setting so to make sure that Unreal uses DirectX 12 we can go to edit project settings and scroll to the way down until we get windows under platforms we will get then default RHI which is DirectX 12 if not to default 11 so you need to make sure you set it up to DirectX 12 and it may be required to restart the editor so go for it so here is our static mesh that we created from scratch using this displacement technique so what if we need to just modify an existing asset or static mesh we had before from Quixel library or just any other 3D package we actually can do it it's the same process no differences we just need to have the displacement texture So finally applied and we can open it in the asset editor right click and select edit tundra rocky ground and it will open the asset editor so here we don't need to apply the material as it's by default applied we just here need to go down here into LOD settings and search for number of LODs and decrease it to one and then apply changes also we need to enable nanite support and then apply changes as we did for the plane that has the sand material it's the same process no many changes in it so we can then minimize this tab back again to select mode browse to this asset and grab the default one that we duplicated also we can just duplicate this one by using alt and dragging with left mouse button and from the content browser as we selected this static mesh we can just replace it in the details panel so we can go to let nanite visualization and mask so we will visualize that it's market in green which is nanite and the other one is red 
we can actually see it as the whole ground is turned into red so we back again into lit mode and trying to and try to visualize these small little details we get from the displacement tool and we can also get it from the top as here it looks more crisp and sharp than it, than this one as here we have more details more micro details in the static mesh itself so as for this static mesh if if we just edit a basic plane i think it shapes plane and scale it to five to be matched with the other static mesh and apply the same material on it we can here visualize the big difference between these two assets here it looks more realistic it's pretty awesome than this flat surface so we can also go there and we visualize this the displacement effect on the static mesh rather than this one is totally flat and have very poor result compared to this one so we are done now with this quick and short video tutorial i hope you found this helpful and you learned something it would be very appreciated if you give it a like and subscribe for upcoming videos and sure leave your comment if you have any questions thank you so much for watching and i will see you again in the next video